right, welcome my friend to the next episode of the Red Delta Project Podcast, helping you maximize your results with minimalist approaches to diet and exercise. This week's episode is fielding some of the best questions I've gotten from you regarding pull-up training, back, biceps, and all that good stuff. As I did with last week's episode on push-up training, I left a list down below in the description of all of the questions along with their timestamps. So if you wanna skip ahead and get to the questions that are most important to you, you can figure out how to do that down below in the description. All right, first question, Matt, what do you think about dead hang pull-ups? Dead hang pull-ups, very, kind of polarizing topic in fit in uh, body weight training and on the internet some people are like it's the best thing ever pull-ups only count if you come to a dead hang and other people are like no they're bad for your joints and stuff well personally i don't teach dead hang pull-ups but it has nothing to do with either of these views instead the way i've always seen exercise is that the whole point of any type of training is to stimulate adaptation in the muscle and you do that only one way and that is the creation of muscle tension. Your brain creates a signal that sends literally electrical currents through your nervous system that make your muscles contract. And it's that signal that actually tells your muscles how they need to change and adapt. So my advice is simple, maximize your range of motion. The thing that the dead hang pundits get right is that yes, going with a bigger range oftentimes does make the muscle work harder. However, we always want to make sure that we're putting productivity of our exercise first rather than just working harder. Because a lot of times in fitness, yes, working harder does equal more of a productive workout, but sometimes it goes the opposite. Sometimes working harder can actually compromise the effectiveness of your exercise and your workout routine. And this is just one such case. So get as much range of motion as humanly possible, but keep the tension in the muscle. You'll keep the uh, signal going through your muscles. You will also improve your active mobility, which is more important than your passive mobility. You'll create much more tactile strength in your muscles, therefore your uh, tendons as well, because they're attached and everything. So all those benefits you're looking for, you'll get more of by maintaining tension through the biggest range of motion possible, rather than achieving the biggest range of motion by turning off your muscles. Next question is elbow pain right in here, right on the inside of the elbow typically. Very, uh, well, not common, but it's the more common injury that you often find in the body weight training world. Like all sorts of joint pain, Pain in the elbow from doing pulling exercises is usually a sign of somewhere there's a misalignment of force. And keep in mind, your joints are designed to handle an insane amount of stress going through them, and your elbows are no different, but they don't handle stress very well when the stress is going into them. So what's going on with having a little bit of burning tendinosis kind of thing in your elbow is the energy is going towards the elbow and it's stopping there for some reason. The biggest reason is usually that something in your back and your upper back and your shoulders isn't quite doing its job. Oftentimes what this is, is a slightly rotated shoulder and scapula. So you have a slightly elevated in upward rotated scapula. So you're kind of hunched over. Very common because we have this kind of kyphotic posture very, very often because we're sitting and doing things like this. So then when we go and do pull-ups and we're all hunched up like Quasimodo, that creates a lot of misalignment which causes those problems. So the solution is to re-engage our back muscles to rotate the scapula down and in a little bit. What that's going to do is create what I call torquing, where the arm rotates down and back, and it's not just the arm, but it's the, the shoulder and the scap, everything is coming in and down. It takes a good amount of strength in the back in order to make that happen. But what that does is it literally releases the dam that's causing the force to pull into that elbow, and it then sends it, not down, but up into your back, so your back handles that type of force, as opposed to your, uh, your joints. If you wanna learn more, check out my new video on scapular rotation and how that's a massive game changer for your push-ups and pull-ups. Put a link up here as well as a link down below in the description. Next question is, how do I get my first repetition? You know, pull-ups, as we often think of them, right? Full body weight uh, from an overhead bar is actually a pretty tough exercise in the body weight training world. And a lot of folks are struggling to get that coveted first repetition. It's certainly a very good goal and milestone to have. However, this is another 
a sign of that dreaded calisthenics rut rearing its ugly head, where we think of pull-ups as being one standard way of doing them, when the reality is that's just one type of exercise for your pull chain where you're bringing your hands closer to your torso. So the biggest mistake I often see people making is that they keep trying to do pull-ups, the classic full body weight style pull-up in some way, when instead what you wanna do is think of the pull-up movement pattern. So that's why I recommend using other types of pulling style exercises, particularly something like jackknife pull-ups where your feet are on the ground or on a chair or something, and you're pulling yourself up, your torso is still vertical, but now you're having to deal with far less resistance. What this does is it creates the exact same stimulus as a regular pull-up, because your arms and your muscles are working in the same type of way, but the resistance is lower. So now you can really train your nervous system to be stronger in that motion and then progress it and grow it. And eventually you get to the point where you won't need to have your feet on the floor, but you can do the full on body weight style pull up. Next question I get is kind of along the same lines of what do I think about doing pull up negatives where you just kind of jump up or you have someone kind of hoist you up a little bit and then you lower yourself under control. This is another common strategy for people trying to get that coveted first repetition. And it can work very well. However, it's also very easy to overload your system. And if you don't have that strength in your back, and you have that kyphotic, uh, kyphotic, can talk today, kyphotic uh, posture and you're all hunched up, know that you're also going with a misalignment, which covers two different problems. One is again, you've got more tension in that elbow. And two, you're also using a fraction of your actual strength that's available to you because you're turning off a lot of the muscle in the back and you're almost exclusively relying on shoulders and arms to get the exercise done. Negatives can be good as a tool, but I certainly wouldn't use them as the only way to go about it. Instead, I would do potentially like just low repetitions, like four to five reps per workout of negatives, just to kind of get that feel, but make things like the regressed pull-ups, like the jackknife pull-ups, your bread and butter for getting your muscles to work in that motion in both eccentric and concentric motions to get used to that action. Next question is, how do I get more repetitions? All right, so you've got the, the reps, but a lot of people find themselves getting stuck in the three to five pull-up rep range, or less than 10, and are trying to get more repetitions. What can you do? Well, essentially what you're trying to do is just get more used to the exercise. Your body increases its repetitions because you get much better at doing the repetitions you already can do. So if you're stuck at five repetitions, the reason why you can't do more is because those five reps aren't quite proficient enough for you to have any energy left over for doing more reps. There's a couple ways you can do this. One is increase your repetitions of a regressed exercise. Once again, like that jackknife pull up. So that way you're getting your muscles and your mind used to doing 10, 15, maybe even 20 repetitions of an easier variant. The other thing you can do is break up your pull-ups can get more like a grease the groove approach. So let's say you can do five repetitions. So now you're doing only one, two, or maybe three reps. So you keep your muscles relatively fresh. Then you can space pull-ups uh, throughout your workout or you can space them throughout the day. But the bottom line is you're getting your muscles to get more repetitions spaced out because you're managing your fatigue a lot easier. And that just builds up the habit because strength like anything else is a skill. You wanna get used to doing the exercise, which is hard to do when you're only practicing it once or twice a week for a very low number of repetitions. So keeping the fatigue low, but the repetitions high gives you a lot more practice. Therefore you get more proficient, more proficiency will add up to more repetitions. And then the last question is, can I do pull-ups every single day? And for that, I say, of course, you can do any kind of exercise and any kind of training every single day, because always remember, you do not need to recover from exercise or working out. You need to recover from fatigue. That's the thing that we often miss. So always recover based on your fatigue levels. If you do a pull-up workout the next day, you're like, oh man, I am stiff and tight and sore and tired and all that, then you need more recovery time. You need to give your body the ability to adapt to the stimulus you just gave it. But if you're waking up and or you're finding yourself pretty fresh and ready to rock and roll, then rock and roll by all means. Ideally, you wanna be going after your pull-up workouts 
feeling kind of hungry for the repetitions. You're trying to build a progressive momentum, and that's a heck of a lot easier to do when your mind and your muscles are as fresh as possible. If you're grabbing onto that pull-up bar and your mind is like, oh gosh, I really don't want to do this right now, or your muscles are feeling stiff and they're like fighting you, and last time you got 10 reps and now you can only get five, and oh, that type of attitude, it's almost impossible to create a progressive stimulus in that. Once again, we're looking at, yeah, but it's hard. It's really tough. That doesn't mean it's productive. Workouts are productive because of a progressive stimulus. If it's harder and because you're tired, you're burned out, you're stressed or whatever, then you're going to have even a harder workout, but you're not being able to create a progressive stimulus in your muscle tension. And that's actually going to be counterproductive. Thank you as always very much for watching and or listening. If you're listening to this, of course, in the podcast directory of your choice, hope that answers some of your questions and brings your pull-up training to a little bit of a higher level. Thoughts, comments, questions down below here on YouTube as always. And if you're interested in checking out more information, my books, of course, Smart Bodyweight Training, Grind Style Calisthenics for more ways to take your pull-up training to the next level. Thanks as always. Be fit, live free.